Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please click on like and subscribe. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today I'm going to build a three picket uh, planter. Now I got this idea from Matthew Peach. I was watching one of his videos. I'm going to make a few changes to his. So I took his cut list and what I did is on some of his, he's got like um, 11 5 eighths. I went ahead and added 3 eighths to make this 2 by 12. So when I added 3 eighths to this, I need to add 3 eighths to all these other dimensions to get these even numbers. But I'll end up with a 2 by 12, a 2 by 9, a 10 and 3 quarter, and a 7 and 3 quarter. Now this will make it easier for me to cut these angles or cut the lengths off versus 3 eighths. I can do it, but I'm going to try it this way and see if it comes out a little bit better. So, now two things that will definitely change are the wall boards. So I'm not going to cut the wall boards yet. And I'm not going to cut the top boards because I'm adding a little bit different dimension up here. So that's going to change the length of my wall boards and my floor boards. So basically we're going to start by building the frame pre-assemble it and then see what we need to do with our wall boards, our top board, and our floor boards. Now I'm not going to show you how to cut every single board. I'm just going to cut my board lengths. I'll show you cuts here and there as need be. Uh, most people don't want to watch them anyhow or i got to put times a thousand to get it through. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you nip the end of your board off and, so you've got a nice clean edge over here. And then when you do measure out your uh, board length, like this is 16 inches, remember these aren't perfectly flat or straight even though I've put them through the planer. Like this one has a little bit of bow to it. Make sure you keep pressure on it so you get a nice straight edge. And again, the gap back here in the back, as long as you're touching your fence on both sides, we're not going to worry about right now because we're going to remove that on the table saw. All right, so here's my uh, cut length boards for my legs, my top and my bottom. Legs, top A, top B. And again, I need to cut one of these planks because we're making them two inches wide. So I need one section and we'll rip that down to two inches in a second. So far I've still got one full plank left, uh, one almost half plank, and one little piece off the end of one. So the next thing we want to do is get a nice straight edge on the outside. We've got a nice flat edge on the back, so you can do this one of two ways. You can either put it in a sled, if you've got a good sled, and slide this across and get the edges off. Or you can use like an I-beam uh, level, or I've got this thing, it's a Dubois, it's just a piece of aluminum, nice and flat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put mine in here. I'm putting my board up against here, and you can see there's a gap. It's hard to see, but there's a gap right there. And when I slide this, I'm going to slide both pieces through. And what that'll do is that'll keep my board from flexing up against the fence. So anywhere there's a gap, we don't want it to ride the fence with the blade because we'll end up with the same curvature on the outside. So I'm going to rip those down real quick. And then once I get that, then we'll start ripping off our two inch pieces. After we get our two inch pieces down, then we'll cut our angles in. So now I've got nice flat edges on one side of the board. So even though this side's still cupped a little bit, this side is nice and flat, so we can run it up against our fence. So I'm going to turn all my boards with our clean cuts facing to the fence now, so I don't forget and cut the wrong side of it by accident, which never happens, but if it did happen, well, it happens. Now all his boards and the boards I'm doing, since I'm kind of replicating his, are two inches wide, so I'm going to go ahead and set my fence to two inches. And I'm going to cut my appropriate boards out of here so basically i need two a tops two a bottoms two b tops two b bottoms and i need a total of eight legs so basically i'm gonna rip all these down to two inches throw away the extra all right so there's our finished cut length boards to size the only thing we gotta do now is put the angle on there so he's got a seven degree slope on his now again you can add two degrees you have to do the math to subtract whatever you want to make these angles at I'm going to follow his steps and see how it turns out. Now one thing to remember when you're cutting these, when you're doing your legs, this is a leg, we want the cuts to go the same direction. So we want to cut off that way. This way when you set your board up, the top is flush with the bottom. On our end pieces is the opposite. We want to cut these both inward. So we want to make almost of a V shape out of these. That way they sit inside the groove like that. Me, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to set my boards flat, kind of like a piece of trim. I'm going to set my miter to 7 degrees, and that way when my saw comes down at an angle, I can cut all the legs at the same exact time, and they'll be the exact same length. So when I go to cut this, I want to make sure I keep pressure on this. I want to keep them all together. I don't want them to move. And when I pick them up and flip them over, again, I don't want them to move because I want to make a nice straight cut on the other side. Now I'm going to grip these tight to keep them from moving. I'm going to flip them around. So I get the exact same angle as I had before. So all these are still flush. 
I cut the angle this way the first time, cut the angle the same exact direction. Again, I can see the bottom of where my blade is going to cut through. I can tell this board's a little bit deeper than the other, so I'm going to come in just a hair when I cut those off. So I get a nice clean cut all the way across the bottom. Now, if we lost any uh, length at all on these legs, it'll be minute and it'll also um, not matter because again, all of our legs are the exact same length now. So to cut our end boards, I'm gonna do similar, except for a little bit different. I went ahead and I'm, I'm gonna cut all my one ends off at the same time. And I'll have to pull these out, of course, in pairs to cut off the other side of it. But I'm basically doing the same exact thing. Just wanted to show you that I'm cutting all the one ends at the same time. Again, that just saves you a little bit of time in your cutting. They're all still going to be seven degrees. We're still going to do the seven degree slope this way. Just next time when we flip them, I'm not just going to flip them over. We're going to rotate them. And that way we cut the angle back in the other direction. So right now I'm cutting out this way. So when I flip them, I want this side to be cut out this way. So that's why I rotate them. Again, speed squares lined up. Everything's nice and square on this side. Hands out of the way. So I'm gonna start with my top. I think this is A piece here. So basically what I got is I've got the saw cutting down and out. So if I cut this down and out now, I'm gonna cut in and across the bottom, which will leave me the V shape I want. If you just put these, if you took them from here and you flipped them over like you did the last time, you're gonna end up with both of the angles the same way like you did the legs. We don't want that. We wanna actually cut it backwards the opposite direction. So again, I'm gonna line these up. I'm gonna line my saw up to where I see it's cutting all the way to the end. Again, I've got a nice guide on yours. If you don't have that guide, you're gonna have to do a little bit more measuring, but. And now I've got a nice little V shape for our top pieces. And I'm gonna repeat this for the rest of them. So there's my legs and my top A and top B. So what you're gonna do, is gonna lay these out in kits. So I'm gonna take two legs, top A, bottom A. Now we have to drill pocket holes in these in order to attach them. You can brad them if you want. Um, pocket holes seem to work pretty good. They looked a little clunky, but they're gonna be on the inside of our planter so we won't see them anyhow. Just have to be careful doing pocket holes. We're only using half inch material. If you dig your pocket hole in too deep, you're gonna split the side or when you drill your screws in, you're gonna blow them out through the other side. So just be careful with your screws. Now when we're putting the pocket holes in, the pocket holes are gonna be kind of hard to read because they're down in here. Unless you've done a bunch of pocket holes on angles before, it can be a little bit tricky. So what I try to do, since we've got a layer of board in at the angle, I've clamped my board way up to the top here. If I drilled this right now, I could see my hole's gonna be right here and right here. What I did is I took the edge of it and I lined it up with the rubber over here. So when I open my board up here, let's see if I can do this without dropping the camera or the board. When I lift this up, when I drop it in place, if I line my corner up, or get it really close to the edge where the rubber is. When I lock this down, when I drill my holes now, my holes will be right where I saw them at the top. After you figure it out once, and all you have to do is keep repeating it over and over. So when I flip this board over, I'll have to do the same thing for the other side. So anytime I'm cutting the board flipped at this angle, it'll be lined up a little differently because of the way my uh, jig is lined up. My holes are offset here. If your holes are on the same line or if you're in the same row, or if you're using a wider board and you can use this two outside holes, it won't matter. Since I'm using the two holes over here, I'm gonna have to line my board up for both sides and pop my holes in. And as you can see, they're not perfectly in the middle, but they're close enough that you'll never see it. And again, I've got to repeat this for all these. I'm not gonna make you watch me draw these holes out. So I'm ready to assemble these. What I've done here is I've clamped a nice flat board because again, my table's wonky as can be to here and I actually put an edge on here. So what I can do is I can push these boards up against here tight. So when I go to screw them, I can put a little pressure on them. I don't have to worry about my boards coming apart. So again, this is not doing anything besides just giving me some place to put some pressure on there. So I'm gonna glue this. I'm not gonna over glue it. I just want enough glue to help seal it in place. I don't want glue gooped out and running all over. You can glue it as much as you want or as little as you want, up to you. I'm just putting enough on here to help bond it in place. And again, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna line it up to where my lines were, try not to move my legs. I should be in good shape. I'm still gonna double check though, because I want my bottom to line up. 
So that square, that square, and again, I'm going to use this to push up against my screw that side in. Sorry for our top. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drop it in here. You might have to squeeze or pull a little bit to line it up. Make sure you take a square or a flat edge and make sure you keep your top aligned because it will try to work its way up out of there. If you need to clamp it, you can actually pull this back a little bit and you can clamp it down to the board so they don't slide a little bit. But just make sure when you're screwing, you don't push it off to the top or the bottom any. So with my front and back and my two sides done, obviously the bigger are my front and my back, my smaller pieces are gonna be my sides. What I wanna do is I wanna draw five pocket holes in the side pieces. So I can attach them this way. So I need five pocket holes on this side, five pocket holes on this side, same on the other. That way I don't have any holes going through my front pieces. Now in this step, he put his, um, I guess you call them your inserts or your planks on the inside. I'm not going to put mine in here. I'm actually going to put my frame together first. And he just kind of squared his off so they basically fit from edge to edge. And then he kind of knocked a corner off of here. I'm actually going to take the seven degree angle and just put it in my saw and just rip the angle. So once I get my dimensions, I'll cut these two pieces at the right angles and then insert them. So I'm ready to attach my side piece to my front or my back, however you're looking at it. I'm going to glue the side of this, and again, I'm going to use my fence that I had earlier, my fence stop, to keep me from uh, sliding off the edge or putting a little pressure on my board. Same thing, I'm going to glue this, but not like overdo it. Don't want glue squishing out. And I'm going to put this up against my fence. Now when I do this, I'm going to take my square. I'm going to square off my bottom. Now it's going to look a little weird because you've got a seven degree cut in here. So you've got to square your corner without pushing one piece up too far, one piece down too far. So right at this corner is where you want to square it up. I'm just going to take a couple small clamps. And pull it tight while I screw it. And again, that just keeps everything from moving on me. So I'm flushing out my top, my bottom piece, and then screw it together. So there's the frame all assembled together. I did have a couple little tiny blowouts. I got a little screw mark here. I have one more somewhere else I saw. Basically after the glue sets, uh, I'll let it sit overnight. I'll back the screw out a little bit so the screw tip doesn't sit through. Uh, the other screw again will hold it in place and if you wanted to you could go back in and drill another pocket hole and make another screw if you had to. I think after the glue sets backing the screw out will take care of it just fine. Anyhow I've got a nice solid frame now so what I need to do now is measure my pockets. Alright so I'm ready to do my math on my triangles or my inserts. The way he did his, um, he measured his length and width for the planter to actually fit five and a half inch planks. Since I've added mine and made it a little bit wider I'm going to have to use two five and a half inch planks plus an insert in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run mine horizontally instead of vertically. Now by doing that, I've got to figure out what I want to overhang in here. So I want a one inch overhang on each side. That gives me a half inch between here and here. So I'm gonna do this at 13 inches and then my bottom should be three inches less. So it's 10. I want a one inch overhang on the top and the bottom. So that's 11. So what I ended up needing is a pyramid shape, 13 by 10 at the bottom, 11 inches high. Now my side pieces are one inch smaller because it's half inch and half inch taken off the side. So I need a 12 at the top by nine and still 11 inches tall. So I need to make two of these triangles. So I'm gonna take these two 12 inch boards. These are gonna fit on my side pieces. And as you can see, they'll fit good at the top. And as the bigger we, as the farther down we go, of course, it's not going to fit as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these in my table saw. I'm going to straighten them out like I did before. Get some nice flat edges on there. 
and two of these together, these are five and three quarter inches wide, I'll end up with like 11 and a half. I only need nine inches. So I'm gonna rip this gap out of here, like I did earlier when we straightened the legs up, put these two boards together with three or four pocket screws, and then I'm going to taper cut them on my compound miter saw. Now, since I know my height needs to, be, needs to be 11 inches, I just happen to have a perfect 11 inches there. If for some reason you're using a wider plank, you could actually um, rip this down to the saw. So when you cut off your edges, just trim one side down to where it fits in there perfectly. But like I said, that turns out I'm at 11 inches, so I'm good to go on my height. So I'm gonna take these over now. I'm gonna put a couple pocket screws in there, probably three um, top middle and side, because again, these aren't really holding any pressure. And they'll also be anchored into the sides. So I need three to hold them together. Now you only need to do one side of this. So make sure when you do, make sure your smooth side is down and not your rough cut. Since the smooth side is what we're actually going to join together. And again, take a look at your panel. Whichever side is the crappier side, like this is definitely my crappier side. I want that to be on the inside and not the outside of my board. And you only have to drill one of these. You don't have to drill them both. So again, smooth side down. Crappy side in. I'm going to tighten my middle screw first. And again, this board is pretty soft because, again, they're, they're still really too wet to be doing what I'm doing. Again, I'm using my cleat on the side or my fence I made. Putting pressure on it, just making sure they don't come apart. Don't want to over screw it because I don't want the screw to come out the front. And I want to just double check it and make sure both of my ends are straight before I actually put the two end screws in. Once I've done those this, I need to repeat it one more time for the other side and then two more times for the end boards or whichever ones you're doing first. So you'll need four of these panels all together. I'm going to make the four panels before I cut the angles on them. That way I can cut them all at the same time. Now, depending on the finish you're going for, if you want to sand this down, you could hit this with some sandpaper. If you're going to paint it, it doesn't really matter if you're going to stain it. So finish this as you go before you assemble it. It's a whole lot easier to finish now than after it's screwed into place. Now, one other thing I didn't mention when I put these pocket screws in, I put them in the middle a little bit because, again, we're ripping this down at an angle, so we end up with nine inches at the bottom. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it pretty close to where you're at. But if you get these screws too far to the outside edge, when you get a rip your angle, you're going to cut through your screw. So just keep that in mind when you're putting your screws in. Don't get them too close to there. Yes. So I've got my saw set to seven degree angle here. So I've got my panels here ready to put in. I'm going to measure my panels one inch up from the bottom. So I'm basically going to set this to one inch. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's basically just covering the outside. But I want to get as close as I possibly can. And again, I didn't straighten off these two end pieces, so they may be a little crooked. But again, as long as the front's covered, that's what's important. I took two scrap pieces of wood. These just happen to be the same size, which was perfect for me, to drop down into here. That way I get them evenly spaced that way. So I'm one inch up and I'm evenly spaced on the sides. I'm going to pre-drill these and then screw them into place. If you want to wood glue them, you can wood glue them. Again, this is more cosmetic than it is um, structural. So glue them if you want to. If you don't want to glue them, you don't have to. Now I am changing my panel size or my screw size to a one inch screw. Since I've only got a half inch and a half inch thick, I'm not careful, I'll drill this right through the face. So I'm only using a one inch screw on these. Now one more thing when you're pre-drilling these holes, since we're using a one inch screw and our boards are two half inch boards, if you take your drill when you pre-drill and drill at just a slight angle, it doesn't have to be a steep angle, so leave enough room that you don't block the side, but if you drill at a slight angle like that, that'll give you a little bit more room to sink the screw in so you can go a little bit deeper without blowing out through the other side. So 
So in the bottom of our box here, we basically want to put something in the bottom to keep um, the plant from falling through the bottom. So I got a couple pieces of scrap left off the legs. I believe uh, in the original video I watched, he had three across here. I'm only going to do two because uh, I think that's going to hold my plant up just fine. So what I need to do is measure the inside width of this. It's 11 and a half inches. Don't measure from the outside edge to outside edge. That's 11 and a quarter inches. So if I look down in there, I can fold my tape in. It's about 11 and a half inches. So I'm going to cut these boards at 11 and a half. If I need to close them up a little bit more, make them a little smaller, I can. If you want to make them a little bit wider and then snake them off a little bit, you can do that also. So that's 11 and a half inches again. You have to kind of work it in there to get below the lip of your beam or your board because it's a little bit wider. I'll probably use the inch and quarter screws in these just so I get a little bit more bite into the wood. All right, so I'm going to explain to you how I got this piece of board cut right here for my corner. So in order to get these 45s on your corners, what you need to do is you need to do your inside measurement from edge to edge on your board. So I come up with 14 and 3 quarters. That's from inside to inside. I'm not worried about the outside edge yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 2 inch board. Since the board is 2 inches wide, I'm going to lose 2 inches of board when I cut a 45 in it. So if I'm 14 and 3 quarters, that's automatically going to make the board 16 and 3 quarters to stick out to here. And I need to add 2 inches to the other side. So I need an 18 and 3 quarter inch long board. So my outside edge on this board is 18 and 3 quarters. My inside is 14 and 3 quarters. And you can see I got a pretty much perfect fit. So I'm going to measure these. Instead of 18 and 3 quarter, I'm going to make them 19 inches. So I'm going to cut two of these boards at 19 inches. Since I've got to rip them down anyhow um, to two inch wide planks. Again, two of these at 19 inches. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to take the uh, rough edge off and then I'm going to cut them down to two inch planks. So up to 45, I'm going to take all four of them, cut them at the same time. Just line them up. I'm not cutting them sideways like that. A nice straight flush edge on the back. Just want to you can take your square, kind of line it up again. This is a planner. I'm not too worried about being 100% perfect. I'll turn this way and then flip it. That'll give me an inside cut on both sides. Now again, I've got a little bit extra down here at this end. So I'm gonna measure over here, 18 and three quarter inches. I'm just gonna nip the tip off of here. So one more thing that Matthew did when he did his, um, when he did his top, he back cut his top pieces to a seven degree miter. So what's gonna happen is if you don't miter this piece here at the end, your miters are not gonna fit flush. So when you put them there, they're gonna be angled. My thing is, is, if you turn them out that way, your, your contact point is going to be right on the inside edge of here. So you don't have a lot of contact points. So you want to touch all the way. So I'm going to try to run this box across here at a 7 degree back cut and actually flush this piece out so it fits flush instead of actually leaning back and having to back cut my miters. If I was doing crown molding or something, that might be okay. But I think this is going to look better with a back cut on it. So it's either going to be good or bad or ugly. I'm gonna find out. Now one other thing I'm gonna change on mine too is he did put screws in the top of his. I'm gonna put brads in mine. So you can screw it, brad it, however you want to put these on. Um, I think the brads will probably stand out a little bit less than the screws. But again, these are not stainless brads. These are going to rust after a while. Um, this is probably going to go on a porch. So it's not going to be in the direct weather, but it's still, the screws may hold a little bit longer. But again, I'm going to put brad nails in it. 
I'm not gonna brad this all the way around yet. I'm just gonna tack it in place. Once I get everything where I want it at, then I'll go ahead and secure it the rest of the way. Now on this one, you can see I only put one brad in. I left this one open a little bit. So when I glue this one in place, I can actually move it forward and backwards, take up any slack that I've got in here. I'm gonna line my corner up down here first, since this is my stationary corner. Let's get my stationary corner in. I'm gonna pop a nail in it. Then I'll come down to what I'm calling my floating corner. And then I can compensate for anything that was off anywhere else and push those so they're nice and tight together. Now it won't take a lot of brads in here, so put as many as you feel comfortable with. And that's not gonna go anywhere as far as the edge. Now on your outside edges, I'll pop a couple brads through here just to hold the corners together. So there's the end result. Uh, turned out pretty good. Quite happy with it considering I've never made one before. I do like the seven degree angle I cut back on here. Um, different than cutting the seven degree miter. I think that gives me a much more solid uh, foundation at the top here. And again, as far as screwing this versus uh, brad nailing it, entirely up to you. Um, take it, do what you want to with it. Hopefully that gives you some ideas, uh, some modifications to make for your own. Uh, please click on like and subscribe.